Sean Burroughs. I'm the director of operations for Ingressive. And I came to Africa, Ghana specifically, because I felt like in America I was misled about a lot of things that were going on. Um, especially since I didn't have a true connection or family here. I wanted to see things firsthand for myself. The first example, um, I moved from Mississippi to Washington, D.C. Um, I was there for ab about two weeks. Um, and I was told that a woman of Ethiopian descent um, was interested in me. I immediately felt like I would pass on such an opportunity because the whole, almost my whole life, the only thing that I've been told about Ethiopia and Somalians are basically that they're from a famine struck, uh, just like it's just a, a terrible place. Like all these, these negative images came into my mind. And that's the first, excuse me, that's the first thing I thought about uh, when they said there was an Ethiopian woman. And um, after living in D.C. for a while, I found out that these are some of the most beautiful people in the world. And it's a shame that we get told so many things. It's a shame that we get moved around in so many different ways where we don't know anything that's coming from Africa. And we call ourselves African-Americans. I definitely see uh, moving to Africa as a permanent thing. Um, after coming here, I can't go back to America, not to live. I can go back there and visit, but it's not a place that I would, I would want to live ever again. So this is a place you'd rather call home? It's definitely a place I'd rather call home. Um, for the first time in your life, to not be a minority, to um, not have to worry about things. You know, uh, America has a very tense racial climate, especially me. I'm from the deep south, so yeah, just not, not to have to worry about those things. It's very um, relieving. Uh, it's like a weight has been lifted off of me, just being here. I would say the majority of my process to reimage Africa would take place in, in two different areas. One would be under, uh, giving the African continent an understanding that a lot of the things that they hear about America is propaganda. Um, just like they are fed false images of Africa, um, Africans are fed false images of America in different uh, places like that. So I would like people in Africa to know that the place that they are in is beautiful too. The place that they're in has opportunity too. And they shouldn't be so quick to want to go and send the best and brightest minds in Africa to a country that's already developed, that already has everything when those people are needed here. Um, the second part about it is um, Africa, they, we, don't, we don't produce finished products. We don't, we don't, um, we don't, yeah, we just don't make a finished product. I think that it's very important that we, uh, as a country or as a continent, move from being somebody that supplies all the raw materials and all the raw resources that, that gives you the lowest profit margin in the sales chain to actually coming up and making finished products. Uh, the only way to get to these finished products is provide people with the opportunity, the, um, the courage to dream, again, the opportunity, the resources that they need to take something all the way to the next level. Because at this point, the, the things that people can do are very limited, like, again, by the resources. And the same thing that they could use to make a lot of money is the same thing that they're giving away, which is holding them back. The only way to bring the attention of people, the, the people that you want, is you have to have some level of success. So um, the only way for me to get the attention of Americans and people in the UK and my family all over the place, Jamaica and all these different places, is to make myself be successful here. So I will come here and I will work hard. I will create something for myself. And I'll be in a position not only to um, talk to people about things, but also be able to offer them something, be able to offer somebody in America an opportunity from the money or the, the power or the influence or the things that I've earned right here in Africa. Well, that's what my job is. Um, I went from uh, basically doing something that was a hobby, like I was always um, bringing together entrepreneurs, um, trying to create different opportunities for people who don't have much to practice group economics. Um, to, so if you don't, even if you don't have the resources, even if you don't have the money, let's work together and see what we can do together without having to bring in a foreign investor who will let you 
or help you have the opportunity to create something, but in the end, they take all the profits and it gets funneled again right back to all these developed countries. So um, I've tried to put people together, tried to teach people to be patient and, um, and do those type of things, again, for a shared success. Uh, what I've done since then now is I'm actually in a professional position where my, my professional capacity is to direct resources through the company I'm with, uh, Ingressive, to direct resources from venture capitalists and, indiv and interested individuals into the African continent. Primarily Lagos, uh, Ghana, South Africa, Kenya, Morocco, all these different places. So technically every day I wake up in the morning now from, from here going forward, it's, it's all to actually bring that dream to a fruition. I almost want to say nothing because there's nothing that's been ever been given to a person that doesn't come with strings attached or a cost. But let's just say this was a dream and somebody wants to give me something. I'd want a, like a, a lot of money. I'd want enough money to disrupt uh, economies. I'd want the type of money where we can start like a central bank or something where we can start instead of going in um, begging other countries to give us money, we could have our own system, our own um, framework set up where we can start funding our own initiatives and it can be something that reflects Africa or reflects the country that it's coming from or that it's going to instead of some other country coming and giving you money but only because they want something from you that in the long run if you accept the money it hurts you. They give, you know, you have the IMF giving loans that people can't afford to repay and it just ends up with the with debt for countries just spiraling, spiraling, spiraling or expanding so so high so yeah if it just yeah just be very simple i would like one like yeah like three billion dollars <laughs> so of course i work with ingressive um and one of the main things we would need in order to further help us bring the resources from uh, let's say america or the uk into africa in my personal opinion we would need the support of the government um and it's not that we want to depend on the government, but we want people within the government to kind of support and help us market these different things, bring attention within the legislatures, the parliamentary organizations, all these different places where um, where people, we could help get the message out. Um, a, lot, a, a big issue that we have is that there are so many spread out areas, there are so many different rural areas that that need help, that need attention, that need resources, that we have no idea of who they are, where they are, or how to reach them. Um, in my opinion, the government would probably be the best place to go to get some of these type of information. I know it's, it's hard to find big data in uh, Ghana, but, or in Africa as a whole, but I think that would be one of the things we would need, access to the smaller markets to, to, uh, to get a better idea of what we're dealing with and how much we would actually need to stop focusing on these um, large metropolitan areas and get down to the people who actually really need help. I think it's amazing that um, Harvard actually, uh, the, Har the alumni of Harvard came here to actually put this event on here. Um, but I would love one day to see if there was a, a premier African university that was doing something like this. If Africa, uh, any country in Africa, any place in Africa had the a university that had the prestige to be admired and um, sought after worldwide. That's people would want to come here like they did, uh, you know, centuries and centuries ago, where Africa was once a, a center for education um, and, and higher learning. So I would love to see uh, that come back here.